Hello, this is Brad Chandler from Allegheny Educational Systems, and this is a tutorial and a demonstration of the Catalyst EX software by Stratasys for Stratasys 3 printers. When you open Catalyst EX, um, depending on which version and which machine you have, you're going to get an envelope. It'll start uh, with these tabs across the top. Um, your machine should be connected. Um, if you are not connected, obviously like I am, it's going to say disconnected. If you are connected, you're going to get model material showing up, how much support material you have on your machine, uh, maybe if it's currently printing, how much time is remaining, how much time has elapsed even, how many layers uh, have been printed thus far. So um, in order to process a file, basically what you're doing with Catalyst is taking your STL uh, file out of whatever CAD package you designed the part in and Catalyst is just basically slicing that part file into many many uh, fine resolution layers and you're simply giving it a couple of parameters to follow okay and so the workflow is you simply work your way across these tabs in order to process one um, one part at a time um, and then you can pack multiple parts together. So we're going to go to File, Open STL, and I'm going to go grab the Hall Pass file. As soon as you click Open, that is going to bring your part right into the envelope. All right, and don't worry about it being in this front left-hand corner. It's always going to bring that part and place it there. All right, we'll have a chance to move it around later. What we're worried about first off is just these few properties over here on the general tab. All right? So layer resolution, depending upon your machine, you might have a couple options here. For just a standard Uprint SE, we only have 7, 000, uh, 10 thousandths of an inch. On other machines, you might have 7 thousandths, you might have 10 thousandths, and 13 thousandths as an option. Okay? Um, that is simply the the basically the diameter of the filament that's laid down and so it's about ten thousandths of an inch wide it's about ten thousandths of an inch tall so every layer is ten thousandths of an inch tall over hundreds of layers you end up with rather thick parts right? but you don't want to lay down that filament uh, solid all of the time that's going to use up a lot of plastic and it doesn't need to be as strong as that um, so you have a couple options here under model interior. You have sparse low density, sparse high density, or solid. Sparse low density is going to use the least amount of material, least amount of time. Basically inside here, it's going to build a wall for the outer layers or this inside area. It's going to build a wall on the outside here, usually two layers thick. And then inside, it doesn't need to be solid. And so with sparse, either low density or high density, basically zigzags back and forth, creating a honeycomb structure inside. It's still a very strong, rigid part, um, but you save on material, you save on cost, you save on time by using low density. Um, if you'd like it to be a little thicker, but still want to save a little time and a little uh, cost, then you can use high density. And really only if you're concerned about high amount of strength or you plan on maybe cutting into the part, tapping, uh, you know, drilling holes into the part, adding pieces to it, cutting pieces away, then you might want to build something solid. But most of the time, most people are going to go with low density. Support. Support fill is basically wherever there's a void or an undercut, um, this part um, is going to, it, the machine is going to fill in from the support material spool. You have two different spools on a Stratasys machine. You have actual model material and then you have support material. So anywhere there's a gap. But with this, obviously it's a really flat piece, except for this little bit of a fillet around the grommet here. So it might fill in under here with support material. But if we had a rather unusual part, we might actually choose something else. So the so the other options there are basic, smart, surround. So basic looks straight down on around the part and basically builds a silhouette. All, all support structures are going to have a, uh, a base 
of about 10 layers thick around it so that you can scrape um, the parts off the tray and not scrape into your actual model. But then basic is just going to look straight down. Smart will create kind of little columns so it knows that it can span a certain, uh, span a certain distance. So it knows, all right, I can fill in here and maybe here and maybe here, but I don't have to fill that entire line um, all the way across the part. And surround is more so for very tall, very thin structures. Maybe for some reason I wanted to uh, build this standing straight up. That would be kind of silly, but to give it more strength as it's being built, I might choose surround. That's going to take a whole lot of time. It's going to use up a lot of extra support material, but maybe, just maybe, there's some cases where you might need to do that. Okay. So most of the time, you're going to use 10,007 inch, sparse low density, smart. If I had 13,007 inch, I'd probably use that because the layers are a little thicker and therefore it takes a little less time because there's fewer layers. All right? So that's the general tab. We're going to go over to the orientation tab next. If I click on auto orient here, that gives me uh, just a little bit of a different orientation. Not really sure why. Sometimes it doesn't quite make sense. Um, but other times you'll see that it obviously put it at a flat uh, at, it, at its flattest point. All right. If you don't like it, you can just simply say uh, restore the STL and that will send it back to the original position that this came in. Okay. Um, what else we can do is we can say we can select a surface to actually be the bottom surface um, or the top surface or the front. So I can say I want this surface, see my little cursor turned into question mark, I want that surface to be the bottom. Now that again is going to take a lot more support material, a lot more time as it moves in Z, as it builds in Z. Um, so we'd much rather have this so that this is the bottom surface. So I'm going to tell it I want that to be the bottom. Or I could have said undo. Rather than just use the mouse in order to uh, rotates this around, I can also go over here and choose top view or front view or isometric view. Okay. Uh, one other option there, uh, you can also rotate a number of degrees. And so I can simply say I want to rotate about the Z axis 90 degrees and that'll build it that way then. Okay. Um, if I had a part that, f that does not fit on the tray and I don't want to scale it down, um, then I can say section part here. I can click on that. And section part just gives me this vertical line. Wherever I click from a top view, it's going to give me this, this line. All right. So basically, it would cut straight through my part and make this one file, one processed file, and print that separately from this. All right. So the one. Um, key factor there is it would allow me to print larger pieces in basically half or in sections, just two sections. Okay, I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want to do that. Go back to ISO view. All right. And from there, we're going to go down here to the bottom right hand corner of the screen where it says process STL. I'm going to click process STL. And this is uh, you probably can't see it, it's off screen just below here, um, but it's running through a little status bar. Uh, since I processed this once before, it's saying, hey, that file already exists. Um, do you want to overwrite it? I can say no, and then it'll give me the option to make a copy number two. All right, so that's processing at the bottom. Once that finishes processing, my properties up here change. And now something kind of fun, you can go to the top of a surface and you can either use step up or step down or you can use page up and page down on the keyboard. And every time I click the keyboard now, it's going through each of the layers. And so the bluish, grayish color is my support material. All right, so you can see around this ring where it's filling in around that, uh, that fillet. 
and then it disappears where we just have model material and this greenish color is the model material with the red being the boundary lines of the model material until it goes all the way through all right you can get back to looking at all of them as well depending on your machine you may also have the option um, to insert a pause so at a certain layer I might want my machine to pause at at this layer before it starts building my text I might want it to pause so that I can swap out material for instance so that I get a nice little thin line of black material at the bottom and then I swap it to yellow or something like that um, so you can insert pauses and also clear them um, from here as well but normally if you're not doing that you can go right over the pack tab and the currently processed file under general and orientation is still in the in the software so we can hit add to pack and that brings our file in All right if we want copies we can simply come over here and say copy I want let's try two now it's saying all right only one will fit do you still want two yes and now it's going to put those in but just maybe I could orient this one a little differently now I can fit three so um, the software isn't has a little trouble with trying to nest parts or try to make the most out of your uh, terrain here we're looking at a top view of the plate so sometimes you can add more copies than the software tells you you can um, if you get a little creative with how the parts can fit together just as long as you don't get them too close and then they cross hatch out like this and it will not let you it will not let you print these down at the bottom of my screen you're probably not seeing it there is a yellow bar that says error okay so as long as they're separated then I can print also over here you can see how much model material it's going to take how much support material and how much time it's going to take to build all of this all right um, if I was connected to a machine and I hit print I could then go over to printer status and I can see my build queue and if I have multiple jobs there I can see um, how many um, how many files I have to print or um, how many packs really that's going they're going to be all labeled pack all right uh, another thing if I have multiple parts or maybe various parts from different projects um, maybe a project from last week I can delete um, several parts and I can add different parts so I can go to insert CMB and I can choose uh, another part let's say for instance the grommet okay so I can bring other parts in I can then save these multiple parts or almost assemblies of various pieces together as one pack. So I can come down here, save as. I can call this pack test. Hit save. All right. That process now, if I go to insert CMB, and I'm going to choose pack test.cmb, say open. Now it comes in both those parts that were separate CMBs. Once I save them all as one pack, they are now locked together. All right, so I can't move them separately. Okay, but that can help if you have um, multiple pieces. You know, maybe you can fit 25 of the same piece or 25 different little various pieces onto a tray, and you don't want to have to try and work that out again. Okay. Uh, from there again you'd hit print work over to your printer status and that's how you print to a catalyst uh, through catalyst to a stratasys 3d printer thanks for watching